Good morning. How does God encourage those who've been carried away into captivity? Our reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 13 and 14 this morning. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy, will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. So again, we're going through the book of Jeremiah verse by verse, and we're just taking every slice as we come through. And the people have been warned. They've been carried away now. They're being carried into captivity. But thankfully, through his prophet Jeremiah, God paints a picture of future celebration. So there are young women joyfully dancing, men, old young, old men and young men who had been mourning and sad. They're, they're rejoicing. The priests having more than enough to meet their family's needs. It's all right here in these verses. This talk about this point ahead to the return back from captivity. I want to look with you especially today at God's promise in verse 14. He promises that he'll fill up the priests with abundance and his people will be satisfied with his goodness. Many of us have spent a good portion of our lives trying to fill up our lives with a lot of things that didn't satisfy. And the root of this is because we're spiritual beings. God made us spiritual beings, but we've been trying to fill that spiritual void, that space that should be a spiritual space. We've been trying to fill it with material things. The right toothpaste, the fast car, the right phone, a good computer. You know, what do you need? Jet skis? What do you need to make your life full? You've tried all these different things. And while some of these things were indeed convenient and helpful, in the end, not one of them would satisfy us. We have to go back to the time of Jeremiah. And you know, although they didn't have some of the same kinds of things, they had the same motivation, the same purpose. They were trying to fill their life. And today in this Laodicean period, the very end of earth's history, what do you have? We have this kind of crass materialism. We're always trying to fill up our, our space with the, the best stuff, the right stuff. We've got to have the right label on our shirt and all that. So this is the way they lived, and this is the way we tend to live. We, we see something that looks like it might be promising, and we fly to it, and we invest ourselves in it, and we spend time and energy in it, only to find out that in the end it's very hollow. And again, this is because we are designed by the designer, capital D, as moral beings, yet we try to fill our life with the material. We tried better foods, better computers, better wives, better cars. None of it satisfied. We look for fulfillment in all the wrong places. God knows what we need. He has that which is deeper and better and more adapted to the human design because he designed us. He knows what we need. God has the moral, which is what we've been lacking. The fuel for our lives that will nurture us is the moral. It's the spiritual. Some of us haven't even known what that is, but as we read the Bible, we'll begin to see more and more of what God's kingdom is like. And it's very different from every other thing that we've learned in our lives. And friend, especially as we read the Gospels and consider the life of Jesus, we'll see that which will satisfy us. It's that which we want to aspire to, that which we want to be more like in our homes, in our family, in our workplaces, in our churches. He's promising them something much better. But they kind of had to come to this dark place in their experience this tragic place with the practical destruction of their country before they could turn around and get their heads on straight. That's the way things work sometimes. It's interesting when we look out at the world that confronts us in our day. Things aren't just wonderful in our world, economically, in every way, morally. But whatever comes next, God will see us through if we trust ourselves to him. Let's pray to him. Dear Father in heaven, we are seeking to be your servants. Uh, we are looking for that which will satisfy. You promised, it, through your prophet Jeremiah, you promised that you would satisfy. A time will come when you'll bring the people back from captivity. Lord, our generation today is very much in need of spiritual nourishment. We need that which will grow us spiritually. We look to you for this. Bless us, Lord. Help us to be in the Bible. Help us to see where the footsteps of Jesus go so that we can walk with him. And Lord, this is our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. God is a good God, and he wants to satisfy us. He wants to give us what we need, and he wants to give you that today. So be in your book, then go out into the world today. See what God gives you today.